Firstly, we want to send out a huge thank you to our generous sponsor, Peterborough and the Corthas Economic Development. We're so fortunate to have a wonderful and supportive partner like PKED that has a strong vision for the future of Peterborough and the Corthas to be the most sustainable and innovative community and economy in Ontario. This is our first public event since the launch of Green Economy Peterborough in April of this year and the first webinar in our Green Business Basics event series to educate local organizations on topics around sustainability. Stay tuned for more information about the rest of our series at the end of our time today. For those of you who are not familiar with Green Economy Peterborough, we're a local network that helps member businesses to identify, set and achieve sustainability goals while improving their bottom line. Through coaching, educational opportunities, peer networking and events, Green Economy Peterborough helps members to make reductions in emissions, water and waste and engage in other sustainable practices. We are proud to be a project of GreenUp and one of eight green economy hubs in the network supported by Green Economy Canada. Many members of our cohort, our founding members cohort are here today. Uh, I saw a few familiar faces. Uh, what we've been hearing from these amazing and engaged organizations is that they're looking for opportunities to take action, but often lack the time and capacity to do the research and find out about what's available to them now. Um, and let alone connect those programs to the goals that they have set as organizations. We've put together today's event with those interests in mind to start educating businesses about what's available to them. We know there will be more funding on the horizon for sustainability projects, some specifically for our members. So stay, to stay in the loop on future opportunities, please sign up for our e-newsletter and follow Green Up on LinkedIn, where we'll be sending out Green Economy Peterborough's business-related announcements. We have a jam-packed agenda with four special guests speaking about current programs that are available to businesses here in Peterborough and the Corthas. We have presentations related to Green Economy Peterborough's three main focus areas, energy, waste, and water. We have Nicole Heinem, Supervisor of Business Development at Save on Energy. We have Joe Mariano, Advisor of Channel Partners at Enbridge. We have Desiree Bandy, sorry, Bandy, right? <laughs> Um, of 1.5 degrees composting solutions. And we have Haley, a water programs coordinator at GreenUp. So just a little bit of housekeeping. If you have questions for our special guests uh, as, they, as they go through the presentations, please enter them in the chat and each speaker will have a few minutes to address questions at the end of their presentation. I'll be running the slides, uh, so I won't see the chat. If you have technical difficulties or issues, please send a message through the chat directly to my colleague, Jackie Donaldson who's here uh, to assist you. Um, and with that, I'm going to switch over and see everyone's faces for a second. And welcome, Nicole Hyman. Hynum. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you great. I'm Perfect. hoping to okay. share your screen slides in one. Perfect. So maybe while um, you pull up the screen or the slides, I'll, I'll give a little background about what my group does at the Independent Electricity System Operator. So my group works with um, customer segments, industrial, private, so that could be commercial, retail, food service, public, um, that would be um, universities, schools, and hospitals, as well as income eligible um, program uh, segment to help them participate in our energy efficiency programs. I can't see the slides yet, but what? can others? Not yet. And I also want to pin you. Okay. Can you see the slides? Excellent. Okay. Um, I want to also encourage people to to move their um, to move around their view, so you can see both the speaker and the slides. You can uh, do that with the at the top right of your screen. Oh, Nicole, you're muted. Oh, thank you. Um, so I'm going to send, spend the bulk of um, the time today talking about the energy efficiency programs that we offer through Save on Energy. But I just wanted to start um, with a little bit of high level context about what we do at the independent electricity system operator. Next slide, please. 
So we, we do quite a bit in the electricity sector at the IESO or the Independent Electricity System Operator. We operate the power electricity system in real time, 24 hours a day, seven days, um, seven days a week. Um, we also plan for Ontario's future energy needs to make sure that there's adequate supply um, as, as, our, our, as our needs change. Um, we engage with our stakeholders all along the way because all of the programs that we offer um, impact our stakeholders. So we do a lot of work when we either introduce a new program or make changes to programs, making sure that um, our stakeholders have an opportunity to inform that. We also enable competition in our electricity market um, and, and we settle the market. And then right now there's a, a large emphasis on innovation. So, and, in, and innovation in the sense would be making sure things like large storage can participate um, in the electricity system and in our market. And then something that everybody is hearing a lot about now is cybersecurity. We take a large um, a leading role in cybersecurity across North America with other electricity operators to make sure that our electricity system isn't compromised. Next slide, please. And then of course, what we're here to talk about today is energy efficiency. So we've had a long, well, I'd say a relatively long um, uh, standing of energy efficiency programming in Ontario, um, but the last about 15 years, but the last 10 years, we have been operating under the Save on Energy brand. And we've had some great success under the Save on Energy brand. We've had over 250,000 residential and business consumers participate in our programs since 2011. And when I talk about participating in our programs, that could be participating in our coupon programs to get new light bulbs, um, weather stripping, power, power, um, um, a power, power strips, or our retrofits. Um, it's also our large industrials participating in our programs. What does this all mean? Well, we've saved 17.3 terawatt hours of electricity since 2006. This is enough to power 1.9 million homes for a year. So that's why I'm really excited to be here today to talk to all of you because the, I want to make sure we always want to make sure people know about these programs and how to participate. Next slide. So I'm really gonna focus on our business programs, the Save on Energy business programs at a very high level today. But before I go to that, I just want to um, make mention that we do have some residential programs right now. We have um, uh, some residential offerings. So we have a, a program geared for income eligible um, households and that is called the Energy Affordability Program. And then we also have a suite of resources on the Save on Energy website to help consumers um, find ways to save electricity around their home. But the focus of today is our Save on Energy business programs. So I'm gonna talk really a lot about the small business program, the retrofit program, the energy performance program, and then two time limited um, offerings that we have. Um, and then I'll close off with just reminding people where to go and how to reach me or my team um, if you'd like to continue the conversation. Next slide, please. So the small business program, this is eligible to anybody with uh, an, an or any company with 50 or less employees. And basically it's a direct install program. So we have a service provider or delivery partner that you would work with and they help you identify if there's opportunities to replace your inefficient lighting up to $2,000. And I would just also flag that this program is being expanded shortly to include HVAC and refrigeration. So this is a turnkey program where if you think you could be eligible, I encourage you to go to the Save on Energy website under the um, small business program, and you can see how to get in touch with our delivery um, provider. We've had a lot of success with this program. It's been going, I believe, since 2010. Next slide, please. So the retrofit program is one of our flagship business programs, and this is eligible. This is available to any commercial, industrial, or institutional, multi-residential, agricultural business. Um, it's basically a like-for-like -like replacement of inefficient equipment. Um, and in addition to saving energy, we've found that it's uh, led to increases in productivity and employee comfort. Next slide, please. So what's, what's eligible in retrofit? So as I mentioned, it's, it's, um, uh, it's a like-for-like -like replacement, and we have a prescriptive measure list. That means if you go onto our website, you could see um, all of the eligible measures and then the associated incentive. And basically, it's a, it's a simple swap out of the equipment. 
Um, and we've got three streams for this program. So there's a lighting stream, an HVAC stream, and a small, um, a small manufacturing stream. Next slide. If you're interested in participating in this program, we additionally, we have um, delivery partners that help deliver this program. So you could call this number um, or visit the Save on Energy website. And if you, they can actually walk you through the entire process. So identifying a project to helping you fill out the application um, and helping you close out the project. And this is a heavily used program. So if you think it's right for you, I would highly encourage you to, um, to contact our delivery partners. So the energy performance program is maybe for a bit more of a seasoned energy efficiency um, uh, energy manager. So basically it's a holistic energy um, program where we pay you for operational, behavioral and, and capital savings. And we look at a baseline energy model that's created at the beginning of your application. And then we pay you for everything that you save under that model. And the incentive is four cents a kilowatt hour paid for each year for three years. There's also a $50 kilowatt adder for summer peak demand savings. The caveat here is that you would have to reduce your consumption by 5% um, at, at the end of year two. Next slide, please. So there is a limited time offer that, um, that um, is available right now. It's for energy assessments. And this, is, is, this would be to get some to uh, have uh, an energy audit, a light energy audit done at your facility. This is available to customers with 500 or fewer employees. Um, and it is co-funded through Natural Resources Canada. It's 75% of the cost of the assessment is covered up to $5,000. Um, and the goal here is to help um, businesses identify how you can lower and better manage your energy use. Next slide, please. Uh, if there's any food service providers here, there's also um, a collaboration that we're doing with Enbridge that I just want to make people aware of. It's called the, it's to upgrade your demand control kitchen ventilation equipment. Um, and this is a slightly different stream. You actually apply through Enbridge and then the information is at the bottom there. Um, I, kn I know that this program is having a lot of uptake and success as well. So if, if you think this could be an opportunity for you, I, I highly encourage you to check it out. Next slide, please. So um, in closing, there are a number of uh, resources available on the Save on Energy website. There's FAQs, there's tutorials, there's videos, um, there's more information on all these programs. And so I encourage you to go there, check it out. But if you need help navigating it, I am here, my team is here. So please reach out to us at any time. Natalie, if you can share my information, I'm happy with that. Uh, I would be happy with that. And um, I hope to hear from you and I'm happy to answer any questions. Hopefully I stayed on time. <laughs> you did great, super fast. Um, thank you so much, Nicole. So does anyone have questions for Nicole, either uh, in the chat or by raising your hand and, uh, and asking them directly? <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna move over and find Joe's slide and get that started seeing no questions. Oh, there's a question. Wonderful. Uh, from Danielle. Oh, Danielle, do you mean the um, for the assessment? Yeah, the assessment is available until March. Um, it is on a first come first serve basis. So if you're interested, please get in touch. And um, we can walk you through what that would look like and see if you're interested. You're welcome. Okay, any other questions? Okay, let's move over to Joe Mariano from Enbridge. Hi, all set? Okay, there it is, great. Thanks for having me, really happy to be here. So what I'll do is uh, uh, I'll talk a bit about some of the incentive programs, mostly geared towards uh, commercial and industrial customers that we're offering at Enbridge. Next slide, please. So just to start off, everyone's probably heard in uh, January 1st, 2019, Enbridge and Union Gas merged together and formed Enbridge Gas. 
uh, incorporated. So we are, we're now serving 3.8 million customers across Ontario, heating 75% uh, of Ontario's homes. And a big part of what we do as we're going through, you know, we're supporting the low carbon economy and the energy transition. We're investing a lot in low carbon solutions and uh, the commercial industrial energy efficiency programs I'll talk a bit about. Next slide, please. So yeah, we work with business partners and customers. Um, we've got about 35 reps across the province and we go from Windsor to all the way up to uh, Northern Ontario. We cover you know, the majority of the province. We work directly with customers and business partners to talk about you know, the way they're using natural gas. Are there ways they can save to lower their gas bills, to lower their carbon emissions? And we work with them to come up with solutions. They also may have other projects they have uh, been talking to business partners about or consultants. And we kind of get together, see what can be done. What will the uh, energy savings look like? And how much money can they get back from Enbridge uh, if they go ahead with the project? Next slide, please. So on, on the commercial side, we have our fixed incentives and our custom incentives. So the fixed incentives uh, work as a coupon type approach. So they're specific technologies that we have listed out and uh, they qualify for a specific kind of rebate amount. And if they don't fall under that, what we'll do is we'll put together a custom incentive. So I mentioned we have our reps all across the province. We've talked to a lot of customers and business partners and what they've told us is, you know, they want us to be available for site visits and they want us to take care of the paperwork because it seems nobody really likes doing that. I know we're not all surprised to hear that. Uh, so we really, we do, we do prioritize doing site visits and taking care of all the paperwork for uh, the customers and business partners to make the whole incentive process easy. Next slide, please. So the prescriptive, um, it, it works as, like I said, a coupon approach, specific technologies, um, and I'll go through them on the next slide, but typically it would cover 25 to 45% of the cost. And it really is a simple one page application form, which we'll, we can help customers fill out and we need a copy of the proof of purchase. And that's basically it. And within six to eight weeks, you get your rebate check back after installation is completed. Next slide, please. So these would be some of our prescript, prescriptive uh, incentives that we offer. So for air curtains, that's often in uh, re the retail sector. When you walk in the door, they've got the air curtain to block the heat from escaping. Uh, dock door seals, we offer $900 per seal, uh, which typically covers 50% of the cost. So a lot of distribution centers uh, are installing those. I know there's quite a few in Peterborough as well. Uh, condensing makeup air units, demand control ventilation, another big um, technology used in retail so that the stores aren't bringing in fresh air all the time. It's just when there's people in there and they need to bring fresh air in. So that reduces their gas consumption. Uh, distratification fans often used in distribution centers as well. Um, ERVs, HRVs, ozone laundry, which is a technology that allows all the cleaning to be done with cold water. So that's where you're getting the hot, hot water savings and the natural gas savings. A lot of hotels, uh, long-term care, some of the commercial laundry facilities are, are applying for that incentive. And Nicole talked about the demand control kitchen ventilation incentive for food service customers. So yes, it's been very successful. And if you're a food service customer, definitely get in touch with us about that. And we can uh, fill you in on on how that works. It's, it's very easy. We go on site and basically do the installation and cover the majority of the cost. Next slide, please. So this is our custom program. The way, if, if, uh, if whatever is being done doesn't qualify for per prescriptive, we put together a custom incentive. So we look at the base case, you know, how is the building operating now? What are we looking to implement? What high efficiency type equipment? And we have our own kind of internal calculators that we use. We'll pull the customer's consumption and we'll determine how much natural gas they would save by implementing this project. And with that, we'll pay 20 cents per M cube save. We'll go up to 50% of the total project cost for the total installation cost. And we cap it at 100,000 per project. 
And what, same with our prescriptive, once installation is completed, we basically send it for processing and in about six to eight weeks, the customer gets the rebate back. Next slide, please. So this is just an example of one of our custom projects that was done recently uh, in, in the Peterborough area, Prince Edward County, Hastings and Prince Edward District School Board. So 12 schools, they installed uh, 32 boilers. So they had like inefficient older boilers, went with, uh, I took a quick peek, it looks like mostly high efficiency and some condensing boilers as well. In the end, they would save 7.7 .7 million uh, M cubes over the lifetime of the boiler, so about 20 years. And the incentive to the school board worked out to be 180,000. So lots of uh, natural gas savings, a lot that would definitely lower the natural gas bills every month. And uh, the incentive was pretty sizable as well. Next slide, please. That's actually it, that's my contact information. If you have, any questions about any of our programs like i said i kind of cover the commercial industrial sectors but we have residential um, incentives as well we're doing a lot of low carbon initiatives with hydrogen and renewable natural gas anything like that any questions you have you can get in touch with me and if i can't help you out i'll put you in touch with the right people at embridge that can so hopefully i'll hear from some of you thank you Thank you, Joe. Um, does anyone have any questions for Joe? As we... It's too thorough, Joe. Do you... uh, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, I definitely think we have a couple of businesses in the network that are home-based. So it's, it's interesting to kind of combine those residential and uh, commercial programs and right. all the offerings. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Oh, thank you. All right. So I'm going to pull up the slides from uh, Desiree, 1.5 degrees composting solutions. We are switching gears a little bit to uh, local programs for the second half here, which is awesome. And I'm sorry, I'm having technical difficulties with my Adobe. <laughs> Just a second. It won't minimize. I'm going to have to close it. There we go. Thank you for your patience. Can we see the slides? Not yet. <laughs> they look white to me. I don't know about anyone else, okay. though. Try again. It's always when you're live that. <laughs> And now there it is. Yeah. Lovely. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for having me here. I always love an opportunity to come on and talk about composting. I am obsessed with it. <laughs> um, so I launched this business um, almost two years ago now, which is pretty wild. Um, it's such a unique business model. And I get asked often, like what compelled me to leave my job in the beauty industry of all places and basically start a waste management company. Um, but yeah, needless to say, this was all very new to me. I've always been very environmentally conscious and I've always strived to make a positive environmental impact in my personal life. And something that's always frustrated me was my lack of composting options at home. So I also previously worked for um, a local organization that had me connecting with local businesses in Peterborough um, about their sustainable goals. And one of the common sustainable setbacks that a lot of them faced were their lack of composting options as well. So I started to really see a need for that. And so after engaging with a lot of people in our community and doing a lot of like my own personal research um, and really reading and diving deep into the food waste crisis, I kind of just knew that I had to do something about it. So 
here we are. Um, minimizing food waste and composting the rest is so important to me um, because food waste is tied to um, a lot of issues um, such as food insecurity, economic issues, as well as agricultural concerns, just to name a few. So like, I truly believe that composting is the perfect first step for any business looking to make um, changes and easily implement sustainability into their business model. So how does it work? Um, how our service works is very simple. We provide um, a six, or six gallon buckets, compostable bags um, that come with sealable lids so that no critters can get their lunch from the food scraps. Uh, once a week, we come and collect the full bags and we replace with fresh ones. So it's pretty easy peasy. Um, when or after that, we then take the food waste to a commercial compost facility where they process the organics into beautiful black gold. Uh, and then in the spring, we purchase back the finished compost uh, from the facility, and then we give it back to our community partners, um, the residents who use our service, and then we donate um, a lot to local community gardens that also go to help feed our communities. So that really beautifully kind of closes the food loop in our community. So um, yeah, that leads me to my next slide. Um, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, minimizing the amount of food that we waste is so important because food waste is tied to food insecurity and a laundry list of other issues. Um, many of us don't realize the inefficiencies that come along with wasted food. So it's important for all of us to kind of do the best that we can to be mindful of the food that we waste and do our best to reduce food waste as much as possible. So um, approximately 58% of the food produced in Canada is either lost or wasted. So that equates to over 35 million tons of food each year, um, most of which ends up in the landfill. So that's not good. Um, food waste in oxygen deprived landfills then emits methane, which is a greenhouse gas that's 25 times more potent than carbon dioxide in terms of its global warming potential. So if we want to keep our global emissions below 1.5 degrees, that's our business name, um, composting should be a top priority. Um, and then roughly 32% of this lost and wasted food could be rescued, um, which equates to just over 11 million tons of avoidable food waste, um, with, while at the same time, roughly 4 million Canadians, a quarter of which are children, are suffering from food insecurity. So that's just kind of something to think about. Um, and another eye-opening statistic is that 25% of the world's fresh water supply is used to grow food that will be lost or wasted. So that doesn't even really include the amount of water that's used to grow the food that we're going to consume as well. So agriculture consumes more water than any other resource and wastes a lot of it through inefficiencies um, while we are already facing a water crisis in not only our own country, but globally as well. So another thing, some food for thought, um, and then $49 billion worth of food is wasted in Canada each year. So that sounds like an economic disaster. Um, just for a second, think about the amount of wasted resources that would have to go into growing, harvesting, transporting, and then wasting $49 billion worth of food. So thanks. Um, but that leads me to my next point. Um, why is composting so important besides the previously mentioned um, points, obviously? So composting reduces waste. Uh, that's sent to our landfill by over 50% at least. And that can stretch as far as over 80% for restaurants, um, total food weight or total amount of waste as well. Uh, so the compost is basically to recycle your food and organic waste into nutrient rich compost, which helps replenish soil and grow healthy plants. Um, composting reduces emissions by not only avoiding the methane emissions from our landfill, but uh, healthy plants that are grown in healthy soil can also sequester carbon from the atmosphere and put it back into the earth where it's beneficial to plant growth. So that's also pretty awesome. Um, so finished compost uh, made from your food waste is also super nutrient packed. So it can even restore desertified um, and degrading soil, but that's like, that's a whole other conversation that I could dive deep into. Um, but also something that is very important. So yes, composting, very important. It helps close the food loop and it allows people the opportunity to really engage with their waste and work towards their uh, zero waste goals. So these are all like really important um, benefits. And in my opinion, composting is good. <laughs> so you can go to the next slide now. 
So who do we service? Um, we service residents, obviously. Uh, uh, we service schools and daycare centers. Um, we service Lakefield College School and two kinder school locations um, here in Peterborough. I love this. I think that getting kids engaging with their waste in kind of a fun, interactive way is so awesome. So having that in schools is really awesome for me. Makes me really happy. Um, hair salons, yes, hair clippings are compostable too. Uh, Union Studio is one of our newer signups and they compost all their hair clippings. Um, restaurants and coffee shops, obviously, you know, big bulk of uh, food waste in our communities. Um, companies like Rare, Kit Coffee, Black Honey, Sam's Place, That's a Wrap Catering, Canoe and Paddle and the Food Forest are all restaurants um, and coffee shops in Peterborough and the surrounding areas that do use our service and divert their waste. So. That's really awesome. Um, plant shops, plant goals, they compost all their plant clippings and any like unusable soil, which is really awesome. Um, we uh, can provide a service for offices and workplace lunchrooms as well. We have the Ontario Turtle Conservation Center composting with us. That makes me really happy. I love turtles. They do amazing work. I love them. Um, Sustainability eStore, uh, they're an online shop locally that um, have all of like your zero waste needs as well. She composts um, and then shout out to Wild Rock. They are our newest community partner. Super excited about that. Um, and we will also service wes or weddings, catering and one time events where food is involved, such as food festivals. Really looking forward to VegFest um, eventually, hopefully. And it would be really cool to partner with these food festivals. Um, but yeah, basically, if you produce food and organic waste, we will service you. So. Next slide, please. So the benefits of our service for um, businesses, um, we work with our community partners to help them find compostable alternatives to any and all of their waste items that they may have. So basically there are compostable alternatives to pretty much everything these days. So uh, to really help further um, the waste diversion will really help their we provide biannual waste reduction reports. So we keep track of our community partners progress and we will like, we actually weigh their buckets every week and we keep track of how much they're diverting. And then we'll do a biannual report on how much food waste that they have diverted from the landfill to date. I think that's a really awesome little tidbit of information for them to have um, and some like just kind of feel good info. Um, our community partners will receive we compost window display signs if they want. Um, our service is convenient, it's clean, it's hassle-free. Our buckets are small and compact and can pretty much fit into any size kitchen or workspace. Um, you can say goodbye to sticky garbage bags. Our sealable lids reduce the smell and deter those pesky critters. So that's pretty awesome too. Um, we also provide free finished compost in the spring for our community partners. They really like that. So if you have a garden, um, your plants will be really happy with that black gold. I love it. Um, but yeah, so basically just our product or our treatment or our service is just like a really hands-on way to take environmental action and using our service can help restaurants and other businesses save money on dumpster bin lifts um, or even eliminate them altogether, uh, which leads me to the next slide, which is this awesome photo, um, makes me so happy. Uh, about the success story, this photo is an awesome example of one of our very first restaurant community partners, Rare, who were able to completely eliminate the need for their dumpster bin lifts, as you can see, um, and they were able to gain an extra parking spot. It actually, I think, worked out really well for them over the last two summers because they had their backlot patio, so I think it cleared a lot of space for them that way, too. So I think that just overall kind of worked really well for them. I love them. I'm so grateful for them. So this is a really awesome kind of display on, on, on how it can benefit businesses as well. So yeah, that I guess then leads me to my next point. <laughs> um, our compostable list is pretty long. Um, we accept a wide range of items that can go into the buckets. Um, dairy, meat, bones, eggshells. I have dairy on there twice. So just so you don't forget, um, we've got fruit and veggie scraps, all paper products, cardboard, hair clippings, obviously plant clippings, um, any BPI certified compostable plastics, like I mentioned before, um, there are uh, pretty much an endless options for um, compostable plastics that can actually go right into your bin and break down and are super environmentally friendly. So 
And this is really awesome. Our composable list uh, is quite extensive, which really gives businesses and individuals the ability to divert as much of um, their tip or a lot of their uh, typical waste. So yeah, just no plastics. Today, there was a, a, a fork in one of our buckets. I'm sure that was an accident, but metal's definitely not compostable either. So, um, but yeah, you can go to the next slide now. So yeah, okay, shameless plug. So um, when I started this business, I really wanted to create more than just a compost collection service. Uh, my goal is to create a conscious movement of sustainable-minded individuals who work towards their zero waste um, goals and are mindful of their consumption and waste. So it's like super important to me um, that I provide the most hassle-free service possible so that um, minimal challenges would arise for busy business owners um, and to make it an easy transition into any uh, commercial or household setting. So yeah, shameless plug. You can find me on, at peterboroughcompost.ca. Send me a message there. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Um, our service um, starts at as little as $8 a week um, for businesses um, can go up depending on the volume of waste. So if you have questions, I'm always available and I'm really grateful uh, to have shared this with you. I'm super grateful. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, <laughs> Thanks, of course. Great to have a full walkthrough of, of what you offer <laughs> and all the benefits. Oh, thanks. Definitely have businesses interested in reducing their waste and or setting a target to reduce their waste. So this is one piece of the puzzle that I think could really benefit some of the organizations that we've engaged. Awesome. Well, I'm happy to help. Any questions for Desiree? Yes, there's a question. Where, me? Two questions. Yes, go, Martin. Okay, you know, I, I just want to say, Desiree, thanks. Great presentation. and. Uh, Love the energy you brought to it. So you said from eight dollars a month. How how do you charge? Do you charge by weight, by by volume, by number of eggshells? What? Uh, how does it work? <laughs> so we so we provide the six gallon buckets, and it's eight dollars per bucket a week. So depending on how much, I guess the volume is where the the cost would be determined there. But we will also work with um, our community partners to help them reduce. That amount of waste as well by going in doing waste assessments if that's something that they're looking for to help them kind of mitigate that as well. Great, thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome, thank you. There is a, a question in the chat from, from Guy. Great program, have you investigated running the collection and distribution side of the program with a zero emissions vehicle? Yes. That is definitely on the docket. Um, right now I do use um, a pretty fuel efficient truck. Uh, it's just like a Ford F-150 with a trailer that has EcoBoost. So um, I did my best to, to be as uh, minimal as possible with my zero emissions. And it is something that I do keep track of and I purchase offsets um, based on, on how much I'm emitting versus how much that I'm reducing. So it is really important for me to be a net zero, near a zero company in the future. So as I grow, the goal is to get into electric vehicles for sure. Any more questions for Desiree? Okay. Seeing none, we're gonna to move to our last presenter, uh, Haley Goodchild from Green Up. Just gonna share my screen one more time here. Can we see the slide? Yes. Yes, there you go. Okay, wonderful. All right, well, thank you, Natalie. Uh, thanks everyone who stuck around here till to the end. I'm gonna keep it pretty quick. Uh, if you don't know me, I am the Neighborhood and Residential Programs Coordinator at Green Up. Um, among other programs, I coordinate DPAVE Paradise, uh, WaterWise, I work with the City of Peterborough and the Rain Garden Subsidy Program and a handful of others. And today I'm just gonna talk about a few sort of cost-saving water actions that businesses can take uh, locally. So some of them are focused on the City of Peterborough and some are, are also open to folks in the county. Next slide. So why should you care about water? 
Um, a lot of folks don't realize that only 25% of runoff, at least within the city of Peterborough, is treated in any way before it reaches local waterways. And runoff, of course, is the water that falls on a hard paved surface area and would otherwise be filtered into the ground, but isn't because of that impermeability. And so that runoff goes straight into our waterways. That's of course also our source of drinking water. And it has a really significant impact on watershed shed health, on wildlife health, and all those sorts of things because it tends to carry all the pollutants of sort of the urban world with it. So another reason why you should care is because urbanization as usual increases the risk of localized flooding. So of course, a key part of urbanization is paving, right? We build parking lots, we build roads and sidewalks and all of these, these things, which are of course very important and serve various functions. But as we do that, we really disrupt the natural water balance. And so a lot of that water, again, that would normally go into the ground doesn't, and it needs to go into managed uh, sort of gray infrastructure systems, stormwater systems. And often those systems can only handle uh, rain events or precipitation events up to a certain threshold. So in really, really heavier uh, events, and of course, if you're around in 2004, for example, you will know this very well, uh, flooding can become a big risk when there's too much water and nowhere for it to go. And events like that, like the 2004 flood, or sort of conversely, really long and extended droughts like we had in 2016 and increasingly in other years, those are all set to become more frequent and severe um, as climate change intensifies. Um, and that's particular to the greater uh, Peterborough area. And so these are all reasons why you should be thinking about uh, water in connection with your business. And I will say here, I, I meant to mention right at the beginning that I am focusing mostly on, on outdoor water use and, and not so much indoor consumption, but um, I'm sure Natalie and, and the folks at Green Economy Peterborough will also have resources for you um, on indoor water supplies. Okay, next slide. So what I'm going to walk through are just a handful of options of things you can do to help um, address stormwater runoff at the location of your business. And they start with sort of the least amount of um, expense or, or investment, I suppose, some of the simplest solutions right up to some of the more complex ones. And these are by no means, it's not an exhaustive list, it's just a handful of things. And they're things that Green Up in particular can help support you with. And the first of those is installing a rain barrel. So if you have a disconnected downspout, um, uh, like somewhere on your building. So that's a downspout that isn't buried into the ground and connected to the municipal uh, system, infrastructure system, then you can install a rain barrel. And when they're used properly, they help slow and divert water from the stormwater system. And the emphasis here is on using them properly. Uh, there is a tendency sometimes for folks to just allow them to fill and then never empty them. And then really what you have is just a very fancy and expensive downspout extender. You do need to empty them between uh, rain events in order for them to really have the desired function, but they're a great and fairly low cost um, option for uh, diverting some of that water with a bonus that you can then use that water. So perhaps you have some planter boxes or things like that in front of your business. You can then use that collected water uh, to, to not have to use potable water as well. So that's great. There are subsidies for customers in a few different regions. So if you are a Peterborough Utilities customer, the Green Up store sells uh, rain barrels with a subsidy um, factored in, which is great. And this year, uh, Green Up has been partnering with Selwyn Township, offering uh, subsidies on rain barrels for folks in Selwyn Township as well. So that's a great option. Next slide. Develop water, what we call water-wise lawn practices. So let's say you happen to have sod or lawn surrounding your building. There are a number of things you can do to sort of improve the ability of that lawn to filter and absorb stormwater, but also to just be less resource in intensive. And so you can have some, some cost savings there. Uh, one of the things you can do is just mow less often or mow higher. Uh, you can amend lawns with various things like white clover, like you see here, or violets, or yarrow, and other really drought-tolerant 
Uh, plants and what that does is if you actually stop or minimize the amount of watering you do, uh, those other sort of non-grass, non-sod species will help retain some greenness uh, in your lawn. Um, not using synthetic fertilizers and pesticides is also a key part of this. Uh, and just minimizing irrigation overall. Okay, next slide. So another thing you can do is to plant a tree or a drought tolerant garden uh, in front of your business. Sod is better than asphalt or concrete at filtering water, but not much. It's actually a really poor um, surface if what you're trying to do is retain stormwater on site. Trees and plants with sort of nice robust root systems on them are uh, far better at it. And you can also, you know, add a really sort of beautiful element. It can be sort of a beautification project for your business as well. So we have lots of resources and tips and, and things like that for setting up a drought tolerant garden that uh, is better at filtering water, but that also will just be less intensive in terms of the amount of irrigation and management it requires long-term. All right, excellent. So you did the things, that's great. You have your garden and your rain barrel and all that sort of stuff. Uh, what can you do? We do have a program called WaterWise here in, in Peterborough. And I will say this is specific to city of Peterborough uh, residents and businesses uh, at this time. It's funded by Peterborough Utilities Group. You can nominate yourself for the WaterWise Landscape Recognition Program. Um, there's more information on the link here that you, can, that you can see on the slide. And what it is, is it we give you a little cute little lawn sign or, or yard sign rather. Um, and you really you function as sort of an ambassador to other people in the neighborhood, uh, inspiring them to take action. But you also, there are some benefits to participating in this program. So uh, you have opportunities to win various prizes, to connect with other WaterWise participants, to get access to special resources and support to sort of deepen your WaterWise practice. Um, it's lots of fun, but also fairly low low commitment uh, on the part of different uh, businesses and residents to be involved. So you can certainly do that. Now, perhaps you are thinking this is great and you're staring at your window at like an ocean of asphalt saying, I can't do any of this because I'm surrounded by pavement. Next slide. We have an opportunity for you. You may be familiar with it if, you, uh, um, if you're in the Peterborough area. Uh, there's a program called Depave Paradise, which is a program of Green Communities Canada, which of course is a national nonprofit. And GreenUp is the local delivery agent of Depave Paradise in this region. And we have now installed nine of these Depave projects in the city and county of Peterborough since 2014. The one pictured here was installed. I'm mixing up years now. It's COVID time. It was 2020. I think it was 2020 at Venture North. Um, this is a great opportunity where uh, we work with you and with the wider community to actually rip up asphalt and replace it with green space. And the main priority of this program is really that stormwater function. So increasing permeability in our downtown cores in our, or in our urban spaces, broadly speaking. Um, but it's also a wonderful vehicle for you if there's a certain sort of goal you wanna have. So a lot of these uh, will be transformed into pollinator or biodiverse spaces, or perhaps you want to create a little seating area uh, that's very welcoming for customers, whatever it may be. So it's a really great opportunity. And as it happens right now, we are taking uh, expressions of interest because we are looking for our next site for early 2022. We have funding to install a DPAVE project somewhere in the city or county of Peterborough. Um, and I will put that in the chat, the link to the expression of interest form in case you think that this may be something uh, that would be a good opportunity for you. Uh, basically how it works is, I don't wanna say it's free, it does depend on the size and scope of the project and what specifically you're looking for. But uh, in general, we have funding to support the coordination time and a good portion of the materials and costs that go into a project like this. Um, on average, the value of 
all of that time and donate, donated um, materials and donated in-kind time from the wider community usually um, ends up somewhere in the ballpark of fifteen to $30,000 per project. So uh, with, and very little of that is usually, um, you know, uh, paid out by the by the by the site host directly, and so a really significant investment and a way to make a really big difference in terms of stormwater management on site. Next slide. What makes a good depaved site? Uh, an enthusiastic host with the capacity for long-term maintenance. So while we do help get it in the ground and cover a lot of those costs, the long-term maintenance of that space is up to the site owner, the property host. They can work with you know, a community group to maintain the space or something like that, um, but it's not green up who's, who's sadly, who's able to, to help you maintain that space long-term. Ideally, we're looking for spaces that are hundred meters squared of underused paved area. We're not trying to remove pavement that has a really obvious function and is very useful in day-to-day -day life. This is excess asphalt uh, that perhaps just doesn't need to be there anymore. And that can be in one big section or it can be multiple smaller chunks. Um, I will say, if you are really interested in this and you're thinking, gosh, there's no way we have 100 meters squared, like still submit in, uh, an expression of interest form. We can sort of work and wiggle with those numbers a little bit. Um, so don't let that deter you. The space should be open to the public or the wider community. Um, that mostly just means that, you know, it can be accessed reasonably widely by the community. It shouldn't be a space that is like only accessible to like five or six people or is, you know, locked and gated off from the community most of the time. And yeah, if you you know, are interested or want information or want to fill out that form, we are sort of trying to secure a site in the very near future. So ideally get in touch with me sooner than later. And then next slide. Right, yes, there's my email. Um, and the photo here is of the depave that we installed in Lakefield this summer, which was lots of fun. And yeah, if you have any questions about depave or about WaterWise or any other sort of outdoor water conservation um, and uh, filtration, solution, let me know. Thanks, Haley. Is there any, are there any questions for Haley? I see a great comment from Desiree. <laughs> Desiree's gonna donate compost to the next depave. Yes, please, I will email you. <laughs> awesome, I just wrote down your email because this was actually something that I did want to reach out about um, when I saw your guys' post not too long ago about it. Awesome. Very exciting. Any other questions? Okay. Lots of good resources in the chat from all parties. Thanks, Jackie, for that. And I'm going to go back to sharing my screen to close today. Uh, first of all, yeah, thank you so much uh, to all of our guests. This has been very informative, and I think there are a lot of folks who might be interested in some of uh, these initiatives. I really appreciate you making the time to be here, both presenters and attendees. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure to be able to showcase amazing programs and, and see some engagement on that. Um, so we have several events um, upcoming on our Green Economy Peterborough calendar um, that I wanted to tell you about. We have a member on, members only foundational training series uh, session next week on green teams, which I hope several of you have marked in the calendar. Um, we also have two information sessions coming up for businesses that are interested in joining Green Economy Peterborough. They're on November 16th and 18th. Um, and they'd be great uh, for anyone who has, is not already a member who's here. I will set a, send out invitations to everyone who ha, was here as well to this session. Um, and then we resume our public facing series, Green Business Basics on January 27th with an event called Future Ready, Building Business Resilience Through Emissions Reduction. The idea with our Green Business Basics series is to take a deeper dive into the three focus areas we talked about briefly today, emissions, waste, and water. So March 24th, Wasted Opportunities, How Waste Reduction and Diversion Can Benefit Your Business. And then on June 23rd, Cash Flow, Reducing Business Costs Through Water Management. 
Um, so that's it for me. I'm going to be sending a follow-up survey to all of you shortly where you can suggest any other topics you might be interested in learning about at an upcoming Green Economy Peterborough event. Again, you can stay in the loop on all of this by signing up for our e-newsletter. Um, Jackie's posted the link in the chat uh, where we focus on all things green business in Peterborough and the Quarthas. You can always check out our website at greeneconomypeterborough.ca to learn more about our work and express interest in becoming a member. We're actively recruiting right now for our, our next cohort, which will begin in January. And uh, it's perfectly three o'clock. Look at that, we did it. Thank you everyone so much. I'm gonna stop recording and